So, once again, very good morning to one all present here. So, we are moving on to the session two of uh, day two. So, today we have uh, Dr. Vimala Deedan uh, for uh, delivering the keynote speak on the machine learning in autonomous vehicle. On behalf of the entire Mr. Jyoti family, let we thank Dr. Vimal Deedan sir for uh, gracefully accepting our invitation and going to give a talk. So, now let me invite uh, Mr. Arun Kiyar for uh, introducing the speaker. Thank you, sir. So, again, good morning to all of you. Today, we have a section about the machine learning in autonomous vehicle. And our resource person is Dr. Vimala Deedan Deedanis Bhavadi, founder and director of Krishnak. And he completed his B.E. in engineering in electronic and communication from Ponga Engineering College, Euro. And completed his master's in communication system from Government College, Coimbatore. Then completed his PhD in from Anna University in 2013. And also he completed his post doctorate from University of Padova, Italy. And uh, now he is also a founder a startup in the name of Krishna 2014. And it was uh, selected as one of the top startup in India at International Science Festival 2017. And he also secured and got a number of awards and honors. And he got a funded from University of Padova, Italy to carry out the research under the International Mobility Program for Young Researchers from India and Nepal. And he's also a member of a number of, uh, such as Institute of Engineers India, Computer Society of India, etc. And may, currently, is there is main research area are cryptography and crypto analysis, internet or things, robotics, etc. So, I once again uh, welcome Dr. Vimaladatan Vedana Sabhavadi uh, for the section. Thank you. Thank you. I thank the head of the department and the college and the ACT for providing me an opportunity to speak about this machine learning in autonomous vehicle for the participants. So, when I come across this machine learning, and you will see how this ML will be used in uh, autonomous vehicles. So this is my introduction, machine learning, IV 4.0 and ADAS. And I'm going to talk about radar, leader, and opportunities and the technical challenges. So you know about the types of communication, simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. So simplex is nothing but so one-way communication. The speaker will speak and the participants will listen. And half duplex, the participants may raise questions, queries at any point, at any time, and come for discussion. And if you go for full duplex, it will be a normal conversation, but it is difficult. But I request the participants to make this at least half duplex. That is, you can raise queries or doubts or any questions in middle at any time. Adas. What do we add us? At once driving assistance system. So before going to that, so I'll talk about M to M. What is an M to M? Any participants do you have any idea about this M to M? What is M to M? What's sir, I, 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 mission, sir? Mission to machine, sir. Yes. Machine to machine. What do you mean machine to machine? Communication between mission to mission. Yes. Why it is required? So in order to get the better control. Yes, it is communicating with another machine. For example, I'm a human talking to other humans. It is the participants. That is human to human. Likewise, if we take the human to machine, let's take 
you take a mobile you take a system so here you are interacting with the system not device that is something but the human to machine but here i am talking to another human through some networks right a machine to machine communication is nothing but a communication without human intervention so in 3gpp it's called as machine time communication so if you take industry 4.0 today that the adoption of this industry 4.0 became mandatory even for the small scale industries to large scale industries in order to survey in the business on the market they have to adopt this industry 4.0 so the lack of education and unclear messaging are the key obstacles for adapting this industry 4.0 so this one this slide so so for the connected devices every year the connected devices is increasing so what do you mean connected devices i'll tell you you take this industry 4.0 basically it is for focus on interconnectivity automation machine learning and real time data here you can see that the number of devices is connected so if you take this case this presentation so i am sitting in one of two and you are sitting at your office or a home a different part of the country but see how much connectivity is required to conduct this program right now so here based on the number of participants <coughs> the connectivity is required you see that number of devices connected during the pandemic period so network service providers faced a lot of challenges initially to provide connectivity right just imagine a mobile device pulled by a human right so there one connectivity is required right so for example if you use a mobile with dual sim cards you need two connectivities you need two connectivities but normally we use this mobile to browse or to do some operations but now to attend this program so we are using the connected device to see like this program so how many programs will be connected or could be connecting rightly and you see that colleges schools and companies and they are using connected devices right you see that the growth of industry from 1 to 4 so in case of 1 you can see that introduction of mechanical production facilities and after the invention of electricity integrating the electricity and manufacturing with mass production and after integrating please wait yes so if you take this 3.0 there is automating the production with electronics and it and if you refer this 4.0 integrating digital and physical systems iot data analytics robotics and 3d printing find the sixth that evaluation as i already said that is adapting this industry 4.0 became mandatory even for small scale industries in order to survey in the market that is in the business right so like industry 4.0 academy 4.0 that is revolutioning this education with ai and automation but because of this pandemic we are forced to adopt this academy 4.0 but otherwise it will take another 10 years to adopt this type of technologies in incorporating with the academic institutes so even the small scale industries are facing lot of challenges for incorporating this but once if we incorporate this 
the utilization of manpower will be fully reduced and that the remaining time that will be utilized for developing some other new applications so if you take this devolution of classroom from blackboard to whiteboard app so like the industry 1 to 4 you see the devolution of classroom from blackboard chalk whiteboard with marker and projector interactive whiteboard and whiteboard app see the evolution so what is machine learning a machine learns from the human and it act like in human so the machine may be of any form any form so here you can see the skilling to reskilling a machine in the form of humanoid robot right if you see spec speed 1 terahertz memory 1 gigabyte and if you have watched this movie the one question asked in that interview so what is the largest prime number m44 that is mersin 44 that was in 2010 but in 2020 have to be the largest prime number right that is a machine learns from the human and behaves like a human right it's a machine so robot if you take a robot so it is the word coined by carol kepper a chick writer so in his story the play begins in a factory that makes artificial people called robots the motivation of the robots is a real or imaginary machine that is controlled by computer and is often made to look like a human or animal simply a machine that can do the work of a person and that works automatically or it's controlled by computer the law of robotics the robot may not injure a human or do any action or making human being to harm and also the robot must obey the orders given by the human except as the orders would conflict with the first law but also it must be used to safeguard the humans it should not cause any harm to the humans so here this is a robot automated robot act as a traffic police but if you see this one this looks like an human but not exactly like a human but the structure and it also incorporate with the vehicle right so i already said that the robot may be in the form of human or animal or whatever it is or a machine you take an agriculture robot so here the robot will work as a farmer you take the construction application the robot act as like a or work like a civil engineer right and you take a robot in medical it work like a doctor that is in a machine we have to transform the skills from the human to the machine if you take this one we have to transform the skills and knowledge from the farmer to the robot so this will act as a farmer the same machine if the skills and knowledge from the civil engineer is transferred to the robot it like as a civil engineer the same way here the knowledge and skills from the doctor if it is transferred or trained to a robot it like as a medical robot or like a doctor even nowadays the hospitals are using this robot for doing surgeries not a mobile application <coughs> is any queries as of right now shall i proceed fine do you know this personality yes yes fine you can see the first generation car in this slide that consists of only one seater and gd nardo is explaining the making of car you can see the latest generation cars that comes with the sensors and then safety features but of course for this like this 
please wait. Apply social body, the Lexus car with 200 meters surrounding view. That is this weight. Right. That consists of only one seater. And GD Nardu is explaining the making of car. You can see the latest generation cars that comes with the sensors and then safety features. But of course, this car comes with comfortness as well as the safety features. The cost is high due to the safety features. So we will see what are the safety features available. So if you see that the evolution of this, if you see that the evolution of MG from 1924 to 2020, so in 2020, we can see that MG Hector Internet Car and MG Gloucester, India's first autonomous premium SUV. So they claim that they are the first. So what do you mean smart cars? So we have come across this, the smartphones, smart cars, so like that. So what do you mean smart cars? We will see what is smart cars. So consider this, this is a steering control in the basic cars. So this comes with the mobile control. That is in the steering, you can control the mobiles. You can attend the calls and make the calls. And even you can control your infotainment. That is entertainment devices. That is controlling the volume, changing the songs in the audio player. So what is the necessary for these features? So if you take this mobile, so the traffic law says that while driving, if you use the mobile, then you'll be charged fine. But the car comes with this facility. That is attending and making calls. So why this feature is included? Basically, this is for comfortness, but not for safety. So while buying a new car, so first parameter we have to consider is the safety features. Then only we have to check for the comfortness. But normally what people will do, they will check for comfortness. They will check only the comfortness, but they miss to check the safety features. And if you please wait, my <clears throat> If you ask for the safety features with the people for buying car, they will check for the airbag, but actually it is not. So the airbag is at the final stage. But if you take that the latest that is higher in cars, so those cars comes with radars, leaders, and cameras. So these are incorporated in the vehicles in order to provide safety and to avoid accidents. Let us consider the indicators, the right indicators and left indicators or the in general, the indicators available in the vehicle. So what is the purpose of using right indicator? And what is the purpose of using left indicator? And what is the purpose of using both the indicators turned on? So what does it convey? What information it conveys? For example, if the vehicle wants to turn right or if the vehicle wants to turn left then the driver can switch on the indicator and conveying the information that the vehicle is going to turn right or left the same way if both the indicators are switched on this says that the vehicle needs attention that is the vehicle is in emergency condition and it needs some assistance and people what they are doing, they are using these both indicators for going straight, but actually it is not so. If you check the traffic signs, so you are not supposed to use the indicators while going straight, but people are using that one. And one more case, so if you are 
if you have parked the vehicle then you can use this both right indicator and left indicator so here the driver is communicating to the the nearby drivers through these indicators right so if you take the machine to machine communication there a machine is talking to an another machine whereas here a driver is talking to an another driver through this indicators right and also the indicating lights gives different information based on the location suppose if you are using the same right indicator or left indicator while you are traveling in the highway let us consider this case let us consider this case so here if we consider this 40 track highway that is 20 at one side and 20 on the other side so in this situation the same indicating lights gives different information for example if the driver wants to change the lane then he can use the indicating lights so it is understood by the drivers other drivers that is that vehicle is going to change the lane that is if you if the driver uses left indicator so he is going to change the lane or if you use the left indicator he is going to change the lane so it is understood so here the same indicating light gives the different information based on the location even at the night time it gives an another information and in hills at the hills the same indicating lights lights gives other information you can check the graph signs so what all the information that can be conveyed by these indicating lights at different locations this gives about the the information based on this lights so now let us consider this car that is mg hector so can you tell me what is the caption that is used for advertising this car that is internet inside so how the internet is provided to this vehicle this device so if you buy this car you have to buy a separate internet connectivity so this device that is this vehicle comes with an embedded sim that is m to m embedded sim but as of right now in india there is no m to m network to provide service for this devices that is m to m devices so after 4g is providing service to this device that is this vehicle this slides also about the discrete sim card for an, an mpm devices that is machine to machine sim card but this is a discrete sim card but if we consider that vehicle that vehicle comes with the an embedded sim so let us consider another example for an mpm device an app that keeps an eye on your heart and quickly read your heart rate or check your heart with them with the ecg app so this is nothing but an apple watch so this watch also contains this m to m embedded sim this device technically speaking both are devices and m to m devices so here it is a watch there it is a vehicle so for this device that is for the watch Apple 4G is providing support, connectivity. And now, other service providers are also providing connectivity for this one. But Airtel was the first one to provide connectivity for these devices. Now, we will see what is ADAS and why ADAS. That is Advanced Driving Assistance System. Let us consider this case. A kid. Is standing in front of the vehicle, the two, especially in the blind spot. But what happened to the the risk of life of the kid? But if you take a professional driver, so he will make the situation safe. So please make a note: a professional driver, well-trained driver, or well-learned driver, makes this situation safe. So even for him, there will be. Certain possibilities 
therefore make this situation so to now we consider this the different cases the case one so while driving if you sneeze you now what happens so your eyes will be closed for a second but vehicle since the vehicle is moving right so you cannot see the road for a second so at that time the vehicle will be moved from 50 to 100 feet that based on the speed you take the second case so while driving the people nowadays they started to use the social networking like facebook whatsapp while driving so i always say while driving if you make or receive calls it is an offense but that condition is safe because you are watching the road that is you are seeing the road but you are using the mobile but if you use the mobile to see the social networks like facebook and or whatsapp or whatever it is now what happens there will be huge risk because you are not seeing the road you are seeing the mobile so in the second case what happened to the risk of the lady the, with the kid again a very big question mark you take the third case the kid is playing right so again a professional driver will make the situation safe basically that depends on the driver so in order to provide solution and to make this situation safety that is used so of course that are DAS, that is DAS, Driving Assistance System, and Advanced Driving Assistance System. So, if the same thing is incorporated in two-wheeler, it is called as Rider Assistance System. In case of four-wheelers, it is called as a Driver Assistance System. In case of two-wheelers, it is called as Rider Assistance System. We will see. So, you can see your van, just like a Maruti van in India, but it, this van is from Eero. So you can see that extra infrastructure that is installed over the van that is only the camera. So in 2010, when I visited this University of Bologna, so there they developed this unmanned vehicle, but they used only the camera perception, only the camera for making this vehicle unmanned. But now the vehicles comes with the radar as well as the radar as well as leader <coughs> you see the extra infrastructure but this is the test car it is the car utilized in the laboratory so the principle of leader of course it operates in the principle just like the radar that is a light a laser light will be generated from the source when the laser light gets incident over any object it gets reflected back. The reflected light will be received and the detector will be used to detect the light reflected from the object. So based on the time, based on the time taken for the light to travel and then incident over the object and get reflected back, that is the total round trip time will be calculated and using the velocity of the light and using the time, round trip time, the distance can be calculated. But here the challenging part is the vehicle is moving at higher speed. So the calculation have to be taken, have to be computed quickly and the decision have to be taken quickly. We will see how. A leader performs free space detection and more efficiently and precisely than cameras. By providing real-time measurements half that is how far surrounding objects are from the vehicle and with no additional computational process so the data from the single leader sensor directly provides the fundamental building block of the successful driver assistance system and this leader utilizes the 
precise distance measurement of the surrounding objects and where it is safe to drive and it gives the information about the objects but the main advantage of this lidar is it identifies the object and also it identifies the type of the object that is the shape so what will be the shape of the object but if you take the radar it will give only the information about the obstacle it says that there is an obstacle but it will not say what type of obstacle but lidar gives the shape if you take the lidar cameras and radars are complementary technologies the camera requires significantly more computing power and the challenging part is that amount of computing power is increasing because it process with the video so that's why the lidar is preferred instead of going for camera because if you take the camera it will utilizes more amount of energy for computation and of course combining cameras radars and lidars so that the computing power is not required to analyze all of the camera data on the same way the lidar cannot replace the camera that is the lidar cannot give all the information just like the camera because it has two disadvantages that is led, lidar cannot detect the colors or it cannot predict the text but the camera can do but of course at the cost of computing so it is extremely difficult or even impossible for the lidar to identify the traffic lights or road signs but the camera based sensors can recognize colors and read road signs using image processing techniques a high solution lidar sensor can recognize the shape and identify the stop signs and other octagonal shape but in this respect camera have more advantage the operation of camera the operation of camera sensor will be impact by snow or rain or fog that is if the environment is fully snow then the camera is difficult to find out the objects in front that is it cannot capture the images so in that case in such weather condition the change of the refractive index with the transmission medium may reduce the range of lidar also so in that case the radar will be useful so see here so if you incorporate all the three then you can compute the obstacles or you can find out the obstacles in different environments so lidar works well in all light condition but the performance starts to dwindle in the snow fog rain and dusty weather condition so if you take that the driver assistance system so that should be incorporated with or it should support collision avoidance or with warning blind spot monitoring lane change assistance overhead clearance cross traffic alert and perimeter monitoring and navigation in tight quarters and even with low visibility condition and vehicle automation and guidance so this one so so about the the block of the elida system so here we have a, a transmitter laser so when the light incident over the target it gets reflected back and then the received signal is given to the control unit so based on the distance the control unit takes the decision so if we take an open loop system so you have this block diagram shows up an open loop system so you have the input system output that is the system will process the input and it will generate the output there is no feedback it's an open loop system but if you take closed loop system so based on the output the system will control the output or will take the decision and controls the output that is not to have sustained oscillation that is barkation criteria have to be considered
So let us take a system which simply monitors some data. So here we have the sensors. The sensors will be placed in different parts of the vehicle and then it identifies or it reads the value and then it gives to the processor. And then we are monitoring the data from the sensor. This slide shows about the, the entire control unit of the car. You can see the car battery, and then you can see the digital processing controller, and then you can see that the motor driver, so which is controlled by the microcontroller. And then we have the sensors, sensor fusion control unit. So here you can see the different sensors that is front radar sensor. So it's what we call as FR. And you take the LIDAR sensor, electronic control unit, front camera unit, surround view cameras, car sensors, steering angle sensors. So if you take the LIDAR sensor, that is mainly used for ACC, adaptive cruise control, lane assistant, stop and go function. And if you take the front radar sensor, that is for ACC, emergency braking system, and stop and go function. And of course, LIDAR and front radar sensor, almost for same purpose, but I already said that, that depends on the environment. And if you take the front camera unit, that is for lane assistant, speed limit display, and then adaptive light, rain sensor, or sunlight sensor, directing sensors. And if you take the surround view cameras, rear cameras, 360 degree cameras. And then if you take the corner sensors, so lane change assistance, and then cross traffic warning, we will see. Here you can see that the electronic control unit that is placed in the vehicle. So there are two types of processing, centralized processing and distributed processing. In case of centralized processing, we'll have only one control unit that is electronic control unit, and the sensors will be placed in the different parts of the vehicle, and all the sensors will send the data to the cent uh, only one control unit, that is the central ECU. So, based on the data collected from the sensors, this electronic control unit will take decision and give instruction to the actuators or controllers. So the decision will be taken only at the central part, but if you take the distributed processing, so you'll have the electronic control unit at different parts of the vehicle. It is nearby the sensors itself. So that they can take the decision based on the data. They can take the decision locally as well as globally. So based on the local decision, that information will be shared to the, the central control unit, that is main control unit. So here, distributed processing, that is the process will be distributed the different parts and the ECUs can take the decision on its own based on the data from the sensor. There is nothing but the local decision. And then that value will be also shared with the, the main control unit. So that main control unit take the decision globally based on the, the decision taken by the other sensors. So you can see that there is camera plus sensor processing, radar plus sensor processing, and radar plus sensor processing. There is sensor is the control basically it's for controlling brakes steering so we will see what how so this flies also about the, the Lexus car with 200 meters surrounding view that is this vehicle can view 200 meters Play as you have a small video. What is the surrounding view? Yes, please wait. Actually, this is an awareness video created for the two wheelers. 